there a worse predator than Hitler? Is there a worse predator than Stalin or Mao? Well, I would say so. The spirit that animated all of them. That's the worst possible predator. And you orient yourself to the highest good. To protect yourself and everything you love against that. And if you don't do that, well, then you're not doing that. Well, what else should you be doing if you're not doing that? What could you possibly be doing that would supersede that? If you understand it. Well, that's the sort of thing that I'm trying to understand and to tell people about. You've talked about this instinct to orient ourselves to the ideal, right? Yes. Do you ever find that that can be maybe too much for people or they they patholo often pathologize it somehow like oh god it's 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 yeah you carl jung wrote a great essay about that called relations between the ego and the unconscious and, and that, that bloody essay saved my life i would say i mean dealing with these sorts of issues for like when i, I wrote maps of meaning it took me 15 years i worked on it about three hours a day and like i worked on it all the time every day sick or not holidays or not all the time thinking about it all the time and it's overwhelming it's absolutely overwhelming to grapple with such things it's very dangerous psychologically in some sense too it's so serious you know it's down there at the bottom and it's very very serious and it it's overwhelming you know and i think some of that might have been what what i've had some bad health and i think some of some of it is for this reason i've seen a lot I've seen deep into the misery of very many people, mm -hmm. thousands of people. Mm -hmm. And so that's, you know, I had someone phone me last night. And he, uh, well, he just sobbed uncontrollably for, you know, for five minutes or so. I didn't know who he was and, you know, his grandmother had died of cancer and his mother had died and his fiance had left him and he had been suicidal and that wasn't all that had happened to him and you know he thanked me for the videos and I've seen a lot of that serious business this mm -hmm. so you know you approach it at your peril and with all defenses intact and carefully but that uh, well, it doesn't matter. That's life's a serious business, and you're an important. You have a you have a deep intrinsic value, and if you don't bring it to the surface, the world is much lessened as a consequence of your failure. And it might be crucial, crucial what you have in you. Do you, did you find that any of your ideas changed when you started to see how big of an impact they were having on people? Did that, getting that feedback, did that kind of change your perception on, on uh, any of the ideas that you've talked about? Or maybe... I wouldn't... I, I guess I guess it changed them in some sense. It's, I hadn't I didn't really understand until I went on tour. I would say I didn't understand how much people are starving for a word of encouragement. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that 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 the desperate depth of that starvation, and to see why that is, is so affecting. I guess I saw it most particularly in the case of young men. Mm. Not limited to young men, but that's where I could see it most, I don't know, grippingly in some sense. Because, well, you know, masculinity is toxic and human beings are a cancer on the face of the planet. We're an mm -hmm. uncontrolled virus and everything we do is destructive and we're leading the entire cosmos to perdition and you know it's those are deep doubts and fair enough i do believe in the environmental movement there's a call an unrecognized call to individual responsibility but it shouldn't be purchased at the cost of 
the denigration of of the human being. Now I don't. Uh, that's not helpful. It's 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 a form of resentment and hatred disguised as as ethical striving, and it's deadly. And and so I'm tar- I'm I'm doing what I can to encourage. To encourage. Mm. I don't believe that human beings are a cancer on the face of the planet. Mm-hmm. I think that you eradicate a cancer. And if you have that view, then you might ask yourself just what it is that you're trying to do with your metaphor and why. It seems like young men have been deprived of this encouragement. And does it, is that that they seem to have been kind of not shamed, but discouraged for aiming towards the ideal or they have some sort of well I had, I had a friend who committed suicide and you know he he was a smart person and deeply troubled by questions of meaning god only knows the full totality of the reasons he didn't have a good relationship with his father he had contempt for his father who i knew and who i thought didn't deserve the depth of contempt that my friend had for him. But Mm -hmm. in any case, he didn't have a good relationship with his father. And so that's a problem if you're a a man, because you turn into your father, you know, so so that's a problem. But, you know, he came to believe that human activity as such was destructive. And so any ambition that he had was malevolent in its essence. Mm -hmm. And so he tried to live a kind of nihilistic Buddhism, a self-negating Buddhism. He viewed himself as a, an agent of oppression. He wrote a short story once about living in northern Alberta. And he, went, his, he moved around a lot when he was a kid. And he went to a small town, High Prairie, I think it was, uh, had a ha- large indigenous population. So there were a lot of we, Indian kids. That's, that's the vernacular of the story. And he got beat up one day by a group of Indian kids, and he wouldn't defend himself. I mean, he was 10 in the story, you know? He wouldn't defend himself because he was a colonial oppressor. Uh You know, you think a 10-year-old can't think like that. It's like, yeah, yeah, they're smarter than you think. And so he didn't think he had any moral right to defend himself. And so that's just... And he was a sensitive person. And so... You know, and it's, it's a thorny ethical issue, isn't it? It's, it's not that he was thrown sideways by something trivial, but he, he killed himself. Well, I guess he isn't causing the world any trouble now, except the trouble caused by his absence. What, what do you think about his environment would have kind of... Uh, so how long ago was this when he had written the short story? Well, he he probably died 20 years ago, and he would have written a short story about that 20, 22, 23 years ago. He had them published in a small collection. He sent me the book and told me about it the day before he killed himself. Wow. So, and I saw him, you know, I I saw this unfold with him over a very long period of time. I wrote a little bit about it in 12 Rules and a bit in Maps of Meaning Mm -hmm. because I knew him very well.